The Genesis G70 is the smallest of the luxury brand sedans. There is the 70, 80, and 90 in the SUV category. There is the GV80, which was made famous or infamous by Tiger Woods earlier this year, good or bad. This vehicle here has some of its drawbacks. It's a sexy looking car, but fuel economy isn't great and backseat legroom needs a lot of help. But hey, it's the smallest version of their sedans in their lineup. But would I still buy it? Absolutely. This is gonna sound probably ridiculous, but I would take this Genesis over a BMW, Mercedes, or Audi right now. Dollar for dollar, this is the better value. Besides, if you are really concerned about your image or what logo is in the front of your vehicle, just put that out of your mind right now because this vehicle's logo won't be in the repair shop costing you hundreds or thousands of dollars every year in repairs like the other vehicles I mentioned notoriously are known for. I know this vehicle's only been out for a couple of years. It has a fantastic warranty, so it's kind of hard to know about its long-term reliability, but with the vehicles that Genesis and Hyundai are making, this is the luxury arm of Hyundai, I would definitely put my money and stock into what this vehicle has to offer long-term. Now here is a selling point. There are two engine options. A two liter four cylinder has over 250 horsepower and the fuel economy is right around 24 in mixed driving. And then you have my 3.3 liter V6 over 375 horses, fuel economy around 20 in mixed driving. This week I've been averaging depending on my drive in the high teens. So it's not as competitive compared to some of the other more fuel efficient uh, turbo engines out there. But for getting up and going, this definitely does a job and there's different drive modes so you can pop it into eco comfort uh, sport and just have fun with it i'm lucky enough to drive new cars every week sometimes two cars per week and the moment i got this one i go oh my goodness not only did it have that new car smell i was thinking damn this looks really sharp and i get into this and I'm going okay yeah all right genesis i see what you're doing you're moving up the food chain i know you'll have a, a few vehicles in the, uh, in the space, in the luxury space, this being the luxury arm of Hyundai. A little backstory, Hyundai used to have a Hyundai Genesis, and then a few years ago, they broke off and created a Genesis brand. And so you got Hyundai, you got Genesis, just think Toyota, Lexus, just think Nissan, Infiniti, Honda, Acura, everyone has a, uh, a counterpart, which is a higher end vehicle. Now, even though this is a Hyundai brand vehicle, the luxury arm of Hyundai, they spared no expenses to, to make it feel and look high end. And the more and more I drive a Genesis, whether it's the GV80, which I had back in March, I think it was, I think, God, what, why aren't people getting the hint that these vehicles have the it factor? They have everything that other vehicles have in terms of technology, safety, comfort. What is it, the, the logo? Is it the brand? Is it the, the reputation from 10 years ago? No matter who I speak with, whether, you know, when Kia and Hyundai come up, they go, you know what? 10 years ago, those brands were the upstarts, the cheap alternative, the entry level brand to get into a, a, a car or SUV. Nowadays, they're going, oh, Oh my goodness, what, what is that without looking at the emblem? And they find out, oh, it's, it's what? It's a Hyundai, it's a Kia. Oh my goodness, these guys, these guys are legit. And then you tell them about, about the warranty, the 10 year, 100,000 mile, mile powertrain warranty. And they go, huh, and the price point is what? And they're going, oh my God, I'm saving 10, 15, $20,000 to get into one of these vehicles versus the traditional luxury brands that you get across the pond. Start thinking about that now in the future. So I'm looking at the cockpit here. I'm looking at the, the fact that you can turn the uh, signal left or right and up in the instrument cluster pops up a camera from underneath each side mirror. You turn right, the camera that under the side mirror that pops up, you can see in there. Don't have to worry about turning your head. Same thing going left. You got the blind spot information in the mirrors that most vehicles have nowadays. You got the steering wheel mounted controls, which are simple and easy. You got the pushes, you got the lane keeping assist. Now it has a, um, a pad here for charging wirelessly of your smartphones, which more and more luxury brands and non-luxury brands have. 
This is as a 10.25 inch, 10 and a quarter inch uh, touchscreen infotainment system. You've got the different drive modes. We've got Eco, Comfort, Sport Plus, Sport. Um, did I say Eco, Comfort, Sport, Sport Plus, and Custom. I thought I repeated myself there for a second. We have a combination of digital and analog in the instrument cluster. I wish it was all digital, but oh well, it doesn't matter. Um, the surround view camera, the, the different luxury touch points. This has this quilted red stitching on the interior. So of course this is the prestige trim level and this is a rear wheel drive as opposed to the all wheel drive option. This is my one and only issue with the G70. And it's not really that big of an issue because I don't care. If I, this is my car, I'm in the front and I'm not really concerned about being a passenger back. But if you do have passengers, I'm 5'11". This is my position as a driver up front. So basically me sitting behind myself. So put yourself in my shoes temporarily. And here's how much room I have between my knees and the back of the seat. There is a little bit of a gap. They have some indents in the back of the seat, but not a lot. I don't think this would be a great vehicle for road trips for passengers. It would be for the driver, but not the passengers. Um, so knee room, leg room, not great, but seat comfort kind of makes up for it a little bit. And headroom is just about where it, uh, where it needs to be for some of my height. I, I just need more space in the back and that would be my only issue. But again, I don't care because most likely I'm driving. It might be hard to see. It looks like dual exhaust, but actually it's quad exhaust. There's two in each of these outlets. Okay, cargo volume wise, sure it's the smallest of the three different sedans that Genesis has to offer, but it looks quite large. Just over 10 and a half or almost 10 and a half cubic feet of cargo volume. Plenty of room for your regular activities, whether it's groceries, uh, putting sports equipment back there and so on. So, hey, consider the size category of this vehicle. If you want something bigger, just move up to the G80 or the G90. Now I will say this, if you have it in Sport Plus mode, it gets a little jumpy because everything tightens up and it's ready for action. So I'm gonna put it into just regular Sport and then accelerate off the line here. This is probably the, the most fun I have in this car is using the turbo. So wait for my turn here and then we'll accelerate. Screw it, call it Sport Plus. Boom. Damn, son. That got up to 54 in that quick of a time. And now I'm in a 54 zone, or 50 zone. Going onto the highway, let's drop it down to sport regular. So how does this thing drive? It's jumpy in the sport mode. And it goes up to speed pretty quick. Now I'm gonna go back to his comfort and drive around. It holds the road really well. Pretty quiet in the cabin as well. People wanna know about road noise. It will get a little noisier if I open the, uh, the moonroof. So I mentioned some of the competitors or at least some of the luxury brands that compete with Genesis, even though this is the, one of the new kids in the block, hasn't been around, but for a couple of years. So price point, what do you think? Well, 38 and a half just to start. Goes up to around 55 and a half. How can that be possible? Can you imagine all the money you'd save if you got one of these cars versus a BMW or Mercedes plus the uh, the resale value down the line or the repair costs of some of those other luxury brands compared to what this is. I know it's still new on the scene, but the warranty makes up for any potential for a loss on possible repair costs. Hey bud, hi. I guess what I'm trying to say is if it was my money, no question about it, I would absolutely buy this vehicle. Actually, if it was my money, I'd probably go for the 80 or 90 because I want something a little bit bigger to have room in the back for the kids and for adult passengers. Either way, I am sold on the Genesis brand. I think you should look into it seriously. It'll save you money in the long run. Plus, it's a great ride. Until next time, I'm Dave Erickson with Everyman Driver. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Adios. One final note, if you are in the market for a new vehicle soon, great. Connect with your local dealership and price and test drive at least three different vehicles. A vehicle's strengths and weaknesses can only be discovered when you are behind the wheel. My reviews can be good, but you need to test drive these yourself. Visit quotes.everymandriver.com, select the make model in your zip code, and you'll get invoice pricing in your area on those vehicles. Shop smarter with price quotes at quotes.everymandriver.com. Thanks for watching. Please cl click subscribe and give us a thumbs up. See you next time.